And I said, all right, be careful. And I love you. And that's the last thing she said to me. Well, she loved me. Ten years ago, a young couple headed out for a Saturday night with friends and never returned. Her smile would light up a room. It didn't matter where she was. She was beautiful. And it wasn't just on the outside. On January 7th, 2007, 21-year-old Shannon Christian and her boyfriend, 23-year-old Chris Newsom, were carjacked, ending up in a house of horrors on Chipman Street. When I look at his pictures now, all I can think of is what they've done to my beautiful boy. Chris's body was discovered hours later beside nearby railroad tracks. He had been shot execution style and his body burned. Just down the road, the Christian family found Shannon's forerunner. Didn't know at the time that she was four houses down from me. It wasn't until Wednesday that police found Shannon's body. After hours of torture, she had been left to suffocate inside garbage bags. Within days, suspects were arrested, but what followed would be years in the courtroom for two families who had lost their children. I promised Chris when I embraced his form in the casket that I will be in court every time one of those suspects makes an appearance. The doors are open. We'll be there. I feel like we have to be. They held true to their promises, sitting through trial after grueling trial, fighting for justice. Eric Boyd is serving a federal sentence for his role in hiding a suspect. Vanessa Coleman faces 35 years in prison. Latavis Cobbins faces life in prison without parole. George Thomas has two consecutive life sentences plus 25 years. And LaMarcus Davidson, known as the ringleader, was found guilty of both murders and faces the death penalty. The misery wasn't over. The case passed through the hands of three different judges and included two retrials that lowered the sentence for Vanessa Coleman. Shannon and Chris both deserved justice, and justice was not served here today. And another shock in 2014 when Vanessa Coleman was up for early parole, but she was denied. If I could have changed things, I would have changed things. Through 10 grim years, the family found solace in a community trying to help them forget the pain. A local businessman demolished the house on Chipman. An annual baseball tournament was established in Chris's honor. And every birthday and anniversary never forgotten. Today, both families continue to fight. We were told from the get-go that this would be a lifelong commitment, and I made a promise to Shannon that I would fight till the day I die for justice for her and for Chris.